subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 10th of November. Eight nations stress need for inclusive government in Afghanistan at NSA meet in New Delhi. Pakistan's Apex Court grills Prime Minister Imran Khan on talks with banned TTP group 2014 Peshawar terror attack case. And. Farmers in Sri Lanka protest chemical fertilizer ban. And now for all the details. A regional security dialogue on Afghanistan hosted by India on Wednesday adopted the Delhi Declaration, stressing the necessity of forming an open and truly inclusive government in Kabul. During the meeting, top security officials of India, Russia, Iran and five Central Asian countries paid special attention to the current political situation in Afghanistan and threats arising from terrorism, radicalization and drug trafficking. The top officials later also called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. India and seven other countries that participated in the third regional security dialogue on Afghanistan hosted by India adopted the Delhi Declaration on Wednesday, stressing the necessity of forming an open and truly inclusive government in Kabul that represents the will of all sections of Afghanistan. Participants including Russia, Iran and five Central Asian countries reiterated strong support for a peaceful, secure and stable Afghanistan while emphasizing the respect for non-interference in its internal affairs. They also emphasize that Afghanistan's territory should not be used for sheltering, training, planning or financing any terrorist acts, the declaration read. The officials also underlined the need to provide urgent humanitarian assistance to Afghans as the country's economy has spiraled into a crisis in the absence of any foreign aid and frozen assets abroad since the Taliban takeover in August. We all have been keenly watching the developments in that country. These have important implications not only for the people of Afghanistan but also for its neighbors and the region. Later in the day, the top security officials jointly called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and he was apprised about the discussions at the NSA level meet. India hosted the dialogue to firm up a common approach for practical cooperation in confronting increasing threats of terrorism, radicalization and drug trafficking following the Taliban takeover. The air quality in Indian capital New Delhi remained in the very poor category on Wednesday with an overall air quality index at 382 as per SUFFER, the forecasting body under the Ministry of Earth Sciences. Air quality index between 301 and 400 is considered very poor and between 400 and 500 as severe. Meanwhile, the Delhi government on Wednesday deployed boats to remove the toxic form that was formed in the Yamuna River in a face-saving exercise amid severe criticism after Chhat festival devotees were seen taking a dip in the river in the past two days. The air quality in Indian capital New Delhi continued to remain in very poor category on Wednesday morning. The overall AQI air quality index stood at 382 on a scale of 500, indicating very poor conditions, according to SUFFER, the forecasting body under the Ministry of Earth Sciences. In some areas, the air quality plunged to the severe category. AQI measures the concentration of poisonous particulate matter PM2.5 in a cubic meter of air. Weather officials said the air pollution level was likely to fluctuate between very poor category and severe category for the next few days due to calm wind conditions in the evenings and nights and the high impact of stubble burning. Residents complained of breeding issues in a toxic environment. Sir, pollution is more, but it is that we will sit in the house. So we try to get a little bit of AQI, now it is 300. 
तो थोड़ा सा हिम्मत आई है तो स्टार्ट करके देखते हैं अगर एक्टिविटी के बाद हम लोग देखते हैं कि अगर थोड़ा सा आपको चोक लग रहा है एक्टिविटी में आपको थोड़ा यू नो यू आर नॉट कम्फर्टेबल तो फिर हम नहीं करते Mean while the Delhi government has deployed boats to remove the toxic foam that was formed in the Yamuna River in a face saving exercise amid severe criticism after Chhat festival devotees were seen taking a dip in the river as political blame game continued over the issue Delhi Jal Board vice chairman and Delhi Zuling Aam Aadmi Party legislator Raghav Chadha expresses anguish at India Zuling Bharatiya Janata Party ruled governments of Uttar Pradesh and Haryana for releasing untreated waste water into the river days after delhi's air quality deteriorated post festival of lights diwali the yamuna river has been witnessing a thick layer of toxic foam following the discharge of industrial pollutants into the river moving on nepal army chief general prabhu ram sharma was conferred the honorary rank of general of indian army by president of india ramnath kovind in a special investiture ceremony at the presidential palace in new delhi on wednesday the recognition came in reciprocation of the honor given to indian army chief general m m naravne in nepal last year The unique tradition of conferring the honorary ranks to army chiefs of Nepal and India has continued since 1950 reflecting a deeper understanding and trust between the two nations. During his four day visit General Sharma is also scheduled to call on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other top military leadership to boost bilateral defense ties. On Tuesday he held talks with his Indian counterpart and was also accorded a guard of honor. The visit comes as Nepal is trying to balance relations with its two giant neighbors, India and China, which have been involved in a tense border standoff. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan Supreme Court on Wednesday grilled Prime Minister Imran Khan over the government's inaction against those responsible for the army public school attack in 2014 and the ongoing talks with militant group Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan. It ordered the federal government to submit a report about the case and initiate actions within 4 weeks. Pakistan Supreme Court on Wednesday grilled Prime Minister Imran Khan over the government's inaction against those responsible for the army public school attack in 2014 and the ongoing talks with militant group Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan or TTP. At least 147 people, 132 of them children, were killed when TTP militants stormed the army school in Peshawar in 2014. The government is in talks with TTP over a reconciliation process with Information Minister Fawaz Chaudhry having announced on Monday that a complete ceasefire had been reached with the banned outfit. The Supreme Court asked whether the government will surrender once again as it is bringing guilty to the negotiating table. The Prime Minister said that there is no holy cow in Pakistan and assured government will fulfill the requirements of justice. The Apex Court ordered the federal government to listen to the stance of the victims parents and directed action should be taken against anyone whose negligence was proven. The top court later gave 4 weeks time to the government to finalize its report about the case and adjourn the hearing. In news from Afghanistan Following the takeover by the Taliban in August, Afghanistan has plunged into crisis, prompting donors to hold back billions of dollars in assistance for the aid-dependent economy. Amid a crippling economic situation, Kabul residents say Afghans are struggling to prepare for the harsh winters ahead. Amid a crippling economic situation, Kabul residents say Afghans are struggling to prepare for the harsh winter ahead. Hajratullah, a local firewood vendor, said that sales at his shop have dropped significantly this year, as residents are unable to afford large quantities of firewood, unlike in years past. As winter approaches, many Afghans said that they were unable to buy basic commodities and urban communities were facing food insecurity on levels similar to rural areas. They are not able to buy food, 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 they
دولت که زمینه کار بر مردم مساعد کنه ماش مردم رو بتا نه کار است نه ماش تردیش نیست خلاص Afghanistan was plunged into crisis in August after Taliban fighters drove out a Western-backed Afghan government, prompting donors to hold back billions of dollars in assistance for the aid-dependent economy. The United Nations has been struggling to get enough cash into Afghanistan to help deliver humanitarian aid to millions of people on the brink of famine and prevent the collapse of the economy and health and education services. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Farmers in Sri Lanka have been protesting for weeks against a government ban on imports of chemical fertilizers. The ban was introduced by President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's government in May for environmental reasons, but it has plunged the sector into crisis. Many farmers argue the policy will hurt the industry and severely harm the country's food security. Thousands of farmers have been taking to the streets of Sri Lanka for weeks to protest a ban on imports of chemical fertilizer. In May, Sri Lanka's government announced that it would ban all imports of chemical fertilizers, including pesticides, weedicides and fungicides. President Gotabaya Rajpaksa said the move was part of efforts by the government to promote healthier agricultural practices and put the sector, which accounts for 7% of the island's 80 billion US dollars GDP, on a more sustainable footing. But many farmers argue the policy will hurt the industry and severely harm the country's food security. Early monsoon season usually marks the start of planting for rice farmers across the country. But this year, many are planting less than usual as they wait for government assistance on how to shift to organic farming. That reduced planting could bring down Sri Lanka's annual paddy yield by about 40%, according to a prominent agricultural economist and a farmers' association. The Agriculture Ministry has acknowledged the shift to organic farming has been shaky, but insists that the policy has the support of various sectors of society. So at that time, the, the right option was to ban that much of protest, right? the health sectors, all people, even everybody against what is this chemical fertilizer is doing. It is not the harm of a chemical fertilizer, it is the way we have used it. For weeks, thousands of protesting farmers have been pleading with the government to reverse the chemical fertilizer ban. In response, the government has imported limited amounts of potassium chloride and liquid nanonitrogen bottles, both used during the rice growing season from India since October. Major tourist attraction in Indian Jammu and Kashmir, Srinagar, the houseboats or Dal Lake, is hoping for a business revival in the post COVID world. However, their hopes are seriously threatened by the state of pollution in the lake. Authorities say they are working on the pollution issue and hope to get it in line before their sewage treatment line sets up. Tourism is a major source of livelihood in India's Jammu and Kashmir. And when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the sector, the businesses of houseboat owners were severely affected. The houseboats owners and people associated with it are hoping for a business revival in the post-COVID world as tourists have started arriving now. Their hopes have however been threatened by the state of pollution in the famed Dal Lake as most of the sewers in Srinagar empty in the lake. तो भी थोड़ा सा टूरिस्ट आने लगा है अभी हाउसबोट भी हम ठीक कर रहे हैं कोई डैमेज हुआ कोई हाउसबोट शिकारा जैसा होते हैं इसका डैमेज हुआ तो भी गवर्नमेंट थोड़ा थोड़ा हेल्प करते हैं उसके बारे में और डल लेक का जो है उसको कुछ नहीं हो रहा है वो बिल्कुल गंदा पड़ा है डल लेक सब ये नालियां जो आते हैं वो भी इसी में पड़ते हैं चेयरमैन ऑफ एलसीएमए लेक कंजर्वेशन एंड मैनेजमेंट अथॉरिटी सेड दे वर वर्किंग ऑन द पोल्यूशन इशू and hope to get it in line before their sewage treatment line sets up. Another problem is that many houseboats were damaged due to floods and fire accidents. 
At present, only 928 houseboats are available in the two famous lakes, the Dull Lake and the Nagin Lake. So the government recently announced a policy to preserve houseboats. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.